What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna go over my favorite way to approach the V60. I'm gonna propose a recipe that can be used with any coffee, whether it be a really dark, darkly roasted coffee or really lightly roasted coffee. Now, this is just a jumping off point. You can obviously uh, play with some of the variables in order to increase extraction or decrease extraction to your flavor preference, but I do believe from my experience brewing coffees of all sorts, that this will be an incredible starting point for you. Now today I'm using a plastic V60 because it is the best at heat retention, but if you have say a glass or a ceramic or a metal, just make sure you preheat it really well. Now a trick that I like to use is I like to take the top off my kettle and place your, the brewer on top as it's boiling, all right? And let it sit there and preheat for quite a while um, as you're prepping your station with your coffee, grinding and everything else. It will get it really hot. Another little hack you can do is since you're losing heat through the sides, um, and this can th you can do this for a plastic as well, but if you have like a, a barata or some sort of grinder with a circular lid, you can actually place the lid on top of your brewer in between pours to maintain some heat, like a lid, right? When you're making pasta. so. It's a fun hack to do that I really enjoy. I'm not gonna do it today just cause it'll mess with the optics, but it will help you increase your extraction and get some really nice sweet coffee. So today, my grind size is going to be at 24 clicks on a C40, which is around 720 microns. So about 720 microns. So from an overhead view, this is what it'll look like. All right. So about a 12 or a 13 on a Brazza Encore, um, but yeah, so somewhere around there. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do 20 grams of coffee to 340 grams of water. That's a one to 17 ratio, all right? So use a one to 17 ratio, and the, the best doses for this brew that I've found is 15 to 25 grams, all right? So 15 to 255, 20 to 340, 25 to 425, anywhere in between. If you go bigger or lower uh, than those doses, you can work with it and do something similar to this brew, but you might need to tweak something like a finer grind size or um, a, 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 a le one less pulse or one more pulse, depending on the extraction. But let's work on this. I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my 20 grams of coffee. So here we go. Get it right at 20, boom. And there we are. Now, I want you to look around your house because I know you all have one of these three things. A pin that is quite narrow at the tip or a brush for a grinder, which has a narrow rod-like end right here, or a chopstick. If you've had takeout or something recently or if you have your own uh, chopsticks like I do that says the Hedrix because um, I love chopsticks. Um, I'm going to use a chopstick for this, but if you've seen my prior video, the pour basics of pour overs, I'm going to link it right here. If you have not, I highly recommend you watch it. I go deep into the science uh, of, of pour over extraction. In it, though, I show that in conical filters, um, it's necessary to create a divot in order to get a really nice even saturation in your bed. I don't like using my finger because it effectively pre-tamps the bed. So instead, I'm going to use some sort of thin cylindrical object in order to create the divot uh, using as much as little compression as possible. I like to hold my arm for stability, but I'm going to start on the outside and gently come to the middle, creating the divot to cause as li little compression as possible. So I'm going to go, see this? and just gently, gently moving the grounds around, up the walls, and now down the center. With this circling motion, you can re you feel that there's not much resistance from the coffee, which tells us there's not much compression going on. So now I have this divot. I'm gonna put the lid back on my kettle, so we're at boiling. So this pour, um, I'm gonna talk through it as we do it, and then I'll put more information in the caption below, and all as always, we can have a conversation in the comments. So my first pour, I'm gonna do a bit over, double the weight of the grounds for my bloom. All right, so I'm gonna go to 50. And then I'm going to spin somewhat aggressively, depending on your roast date. If you have a really fresh coffee, be really aggressive. This is quite a fresh coffee, as you see that bloom's coming intensely. So I went pretty aggressive with it. Now, my second pour is essentially going to be a second bloom. You see this crust forming? there's gases caught underneath it. And if those gases are still caught, what's gonna happen is when they release, they're gonna cause a lot of channels. So if on our second pour, we do a big pour with a lot of water, we're essentially wasting that water because it's gonna go straight through channels. So on that second pour, it's a second bloom, and I am effectively ridding the rest of that CO2. It's out of the grounds, and now it's out of the bed. It's escaped from that crust. Now my next two pours are gonna be the rest of the water divided by two. So I've poured 100 grams as of now. The rest of the water is 240, so I'm gonna do two 120 gram pours. 
I'm gonna pour right behind the center because I'm gonna go at a fast flow rate, all right? So I'm gonna go to th uh, 220, there we go. And I'm gonna give it just a little swirl. You see, my hand only did about a 360, but the swirling continued. It helps wash in the grounds that may be above the bed, and it's going to situate our bed. The idea with these heavy pours is to shoot those grounds into suspension so that you can touch them all and ensure they're all really well saturated and all being hit with that hot water. And then the swirl is to settle the bed so there aren't any channels. Now here's our final pour. I'm gonna pour quickly up to 340, just behind center, and there we are, 340, boom. And I'm gonna do another swirl. Now this is going to help us level the bed and it's gonna settle the bed so that there aren't any channels, all right? Now, this last drawdown is gonna be slower um, and it's because there is some fines that are gonna be uh, hitting the, the, the filter quite well. And this is a washed Ethiopia coffee and Ethiopia is notoriously produce a lot of fines. So this will be a little slower than other brews, but typically um, because we're finishing our pours by about a minute 40, uh, typically your brew time will be around 2.30 to 3.30, all right? Now, obviously with more coffee, it might be a little longer, but it shouldn't be too much different. All right, so we're having this drawdown happen. As you see, there's not much high and dry. There are a couple of boulders, but for the most part, we have it all sunk really well within the bed. We're, we kept a high thermal mass throughout because of the fast pours, raising that level up. We're able to really spike that temperature. And the higher you, you fill it up, the faster that flow is. So the idea is, is to maximize our agitation with that kettle, to really disturb the bed and allow a lot of that uh, extraction to occur from agitation. We're raising the thermal heat, also manipulating the heat part of the extraction to ensure that we have a high extraction. And then we're leveling it to ensure that there's no channels because channels decrease extraction. Um, and in the end, we'll have a really nice flat bed. And this is gonna drain at a final brew time of around uh, about three minutes and five seconds. It's gonna finish at right around three minutes and boom. Three minutes and 13 seconds is when that final bit of water went through and we have a nice flat bed. As you can see, there's maybe 15 uh, large grounds that are stuck up here, but that's fine. Um, otherwise, it's a really nice looking bed. All right, we see that? All right, so there are easy ways to manipulate this brew if you're doing less or more coffee or um, if you're doing a coffee that you want to be a finer grind or more coarse grind. The ways that you do this, if you're wanting a, uh, if you want less extraction, the first thing I would do, if you if you've brewed your coffee and you're like, uh, and you have a darker coffee and you do the same thing I do, and you're like, wow, this is too intense. Well, you can just lower the water temperature. Go down, let, if you're using a stove top, go down uh, 30, 40, 50 seconds, all right? Uh, and allow a lot of that heat to go off so that it, it lowers of quite a few degrees. That will help you lower extraction. If you want to raise extraction with that final bit of water, instead of dividing it by two, divide it by three. An extra pour is going to give you an extra case of agitation. You will lose some heat, but that agitation is going to increase your extraction. Okay. Now, if you're wanting to go over 25 grams, I would automatically go to those three pours. For 15 to 25 grams though, this will work. I did a heavy flow so that if you don't have a gooseneck, you can still brew with this and it'll give you the same results. That swirl is what's gonna cause all the difference. Heavy flow and the swirl. We're relying mostly on that agitation from the pour and the heat uh, in order to extract readily. Now, um, again, with these brews, I've been able to consistently get 20 to 23% extractions, which uh, if you don't know what that means, check out my last video, which I'll link at the end here. Um, and it's typically a drinking uh, a drinking TDS around 1.35 to 1.45. Um, anyway, that's how I like to approach the V60. Um, I hope that you all try it. So I'm going to take my Ethiopia Warka, I'm going to pour it in my cup, and I'm going to have a sip. I hope that you brewed something to join with me. And if not, I hope that you take this recipe, which I'll put in the caption, uh, and brew a little bit and watch again. So delicious. So. Please do, the, do everything that you always do, the like, subscribe, the turn on the bell for notifications, all that jazz. It'd be greatly helpful. Share this video with friends and uh, brew a V60 and uh, tag me on Instagram or shout out in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, a lot more to come. Cheers.